While many actresses struggled to catch a glimpse of the spotlight, Kim Novak found herself handed it with ease. Yet, at the height of her career, much to everyone's surprise, she abruptly turned away from it all. Why? And why did Alfred Hitchcock treat her so poorly while filming Vertigo? Let's explore these questions while sharing some rare photos of her. Years before she became Kim Novak, Marilyn Pauline Novak was born in Chicago, Illinois, on February 13, 1933, as the second daughter of Joseph Novak and Blanche Crowell. Although her parents were Chicago natives, they were both of Czech descent. Joseph, her father, initially worked as a history teacher but later took a job as a freight train dispatcher to support the family during the Great Depression. After attending William Penn Elementary School, Farragut High School, and Wright Junior College, Kim earned not one but two scholarships to the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Even from a young age, she harbored an interest in drama and saw it as her logical next step. At the Institute, Kim excelled academically. However, she couldn't afford to wait until graduation before pursuing opportunities in showbiz. During her second year, she embarked on a cross-country tour as a promotional model for Detroit Motor Products. The company was marketing a new deep freeze product and enlisted beautiful young women, including Kim, to promote it at trade shows. Due to her striking beauty, Kim was chosen as the head model and even awarded the title of Miss Deep Freeze. After the tour ended, Kim had the option to return to school. However, the modeling campaign had given her significant exposure, which she recognized as an opportunity. Along with a few other models, she decided to venture to Los Angeles to try her luck in the film industry. This was the early 1950s, and Hollywood producers were eager to discover new talent. Thanks to her beauty, Kim had no trouble landing extra roles in films like Son of Sinbad and The French Line, despite these roles being beneath her talent. Nevertheless, she worked diligently. Eventually, a Hollywood agent discovered her and promptly signed her to a long-term contract with Columbia Pictures. The studio was searching for the next a girl, and Kim seemed to fit the bill perfectly. Harry Cohn, the then president of Columbia, had grand plans for Kim's career. Rita Hayworth, the studio's reigning a girl in the 1940s, was rapidly falling from stardom. To fill her shoes, Cohn sought someone fresh, and Kim Novak fit the bill perfectly. He hoped Kim could not only replace Rita but also rival the success of Marilyn Monroe over a 20th Century Fox. Marilyn was bringing in significant profits for her studio, and Cohn envisioned the same for Kim. However, there was a major hurdle in Cohn's plan. Kim was not on board with it. Firstly, Cohn wanted her to change her entire birth name, which Kim found offensive. Cohn bluntly expressed that nobody is going to pay to watch a Pollock, using a derogatory term to refer to her Eastern European heritage. Yet, Kim stood her ground, proudly asserting her name and origins. Challenging a powerful studio head was a bold move for an up-and-coming actress. It risked her career in Hollywood, but Kim remained firm in her decision. After some negotiation, a compromise was reached. She wouldn't adopt the name Kid Marlowe as initially suggested by Cohn. Instead, she became Kim Novak, retaining her Eastern European surname. Kim's early films for Columbia, including Push Over and Five Against the House, achieved moderate success. However, the studio began to doubt whether she had the potential to become a major star. In 1955, Kim's breakthrough came with the film Picnic, alongside William Holden and Rosalind Russell. Despite Cohn's reservations, director Joshua Logan cast her, and the movie proved to be a huge success both commercially and critically. Following this triumph, Kim starred in four more hit films between 1955 and 1958, including The Man with the Golden Arm, The Eddie Duckin Story, Bell, Book and Candle, and Pal Joey. Two of these movies featured her alongside Frank Sinatra and Rita Hayworth. Harry Cohn, Columbia's president, was delighted. Kim was finally realizing the potential he had seen in her from the beginning. The year 1958 marked a pivotal moment for Kim Novak as she was about to embark on a role that would change her career forever. 
Renowned director Alfred Hitchcock was preparing Vertigo, with Vera Miles initially cast in the lead role. However, when Vera had to withdraw due to pregnancy, Hitchcock scrambled to find a replacement. Despite Cohn's skepticism about the script, Hitchcock eventually chose Kim for the role, a decision that would prove to be monumental for her career. Hitchcock, being a renowned director, shared the script of Vertigo with Kim Novak, who immediately expressed interest in the role. However, Kim wasn't willing to accept just any terms. Despite her $1,250 a week contract, she believed she deserved more and requested a raise. Cohn, taken aback, refused and suspended her instead. Unyielding, Kim took a bold step, firing her agents and hiring new ones. After further negotiations, Cohn relented, offering her a $3,000 a week contract. Kim, reflecting on the ordeal, stated, I don't like to have anyone take advantage of me. During the filming of Vertigo, Kim's experience with Hitchcock was distant and strange. Despite her enthusiasm for the role, Hitchcock kept her at arm's length and asserted his creative control. Although Vertigo initially received mixed reviews, it later gained recognition as one of the greatest films of all time. Despite its acclaim, Kim's feelings toward the film remain complex due to Hitchcock's treatment of her. Following Vertigo, Kim's career took a peculiar turn. Despite appearing in hits like Kiss Me, Stupid, and Bell, Book, and Candle, her output didn't match that of her contemporaries. Fans and critics were puzzled by her trajectory, with few explanations forthcoming. In 1966, while filming Mystery Eye of the Devil, Kim suffered a severe injury after falling off a horse. This forced her to reevaluate her life and career, ultimately leading to her decision to leave Hollywood behind. Kim's departure from Hollywood marked a significant shift in her life. Though she made occasional film appearances afterward, she was no longer bound by contracts. Instead, she devoted her time to various hobbies, including painting, singing, and songwriting. Some of her folk songs were even recorded by artists like Harry Belafonte and the Kingston Trio in the 1960s. Despite being one of the few surviving Golden Age actresses at 90 years old, Kim Novak hasn't received the public appreciation one might expect. In 2014, when she made a rare appearance at the 86th Academy Awards, she faced harsh criticism for her appearance, with Donald Trump even suggesting she sue her plastic surgeon. Kim was deeply affected by these attacks, but she handled them with grace, responding with an open letter before once again retreating from the public eye. Today, Kim spends her golden years in peace and obscurity. While some may find her career path baffling, to many, she remains a shining example of standing up for oneself, fighting back, and prioritizing health and personal interests. Immortalized on film, she embodies mystery, beauty, and strength. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click enjoy and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the